Greetings, members one and all of the Salivation Nation. Silver, get used to it being volatile. That is the subject of this article here from Seeking Alpha from Andrew Height. And I think it's a lot of truth to it. And it's something that kind of has been around for a while. We'll kind of take a look at the history of it. But it's something that should not discourage us, I think, from seeing it as truly what it is. That is a hedge against economic instability, an insurance policy. But understanding insurance and price movements and the like, I think, will help us better understand and keep our heads up, so to speak, in terms of the metal. The silver futures market moves higher or lower on sentiment, and that's true. That's an area, by the way, that I think really sets this apart because silver is very widely traded electronically. Silver has a long history as one of the most speculative markets. Its price variance tends to be higher than the other precious metals that trade on the world's futures exchanges. In 1980, the price of silver rose to its all-time high of $50.36 per ounce when the Hunt brothers attempted to corner the market. The rise in silver in the late 1970s came on the back of rising inflation. Silver and other precious metals often serve as a safe haven during periods of inflationary pressures. In 2011, the price of silver once again approached the $50 per ounce level but fell short of the 1980 high as it rose to a peak of $49.82. Now keep in mind, that is, a, that is a lot different. $50 was a lot different in 1980 than $49.82 was in 2011. Before the price corrected back down to a low of $13.62 per ounce in late 2015. The shock of the Brexit referendum caused buying in precious metals, which lifted silver to a high of $21.09 per ounce, which stands as critical technical resistance for the market. The precious metal had been trading in a range since late 2015, but silver never fell to a lower low. Meanwhile, the silver futures market has not traded below the $10 level, in over a decade since 2008. At the end of the third quarter, the price of silver was around the $17 per ounce level after trading to a high of over $19.50 in early September. A lot of us were excited during that time. A recent price action in the gold and silver markets could be a sign that a continuation of price volatility is on the horizon. Yes, that's for sure. The volatility shares three times long silver, three times ETM product, USSLV, and its bearish counterpart are short-term trading tools for those who do not venture into the futures arena. So we saw that gold broke out, but silver kind of fell short. When the U.S. Federal Reserve told the markets that interest rates were heading lower, the price of gold broke out of its $331.30 trading range on the upside. The peak of the trading back came in July 2016 in the aftermath of the Brexit referendum. This monthly chart shows that gold broke above $1,377.50 during the week of June 17th and continued to rally. Gold traded at the highest price since 2013 and early September at $1,559.80 per ounce on the nearby COMEX futures contract. Meanwhile, the silver market lagged its yellow cousin. The monthly chart of COMEX silver futures shows a critical level of technical resistance stands at the July 2016 peak at $21.95 or $21.09 per ounce or $0.10. Cents. In June, when gold broke higher, silver did not make even it to new high for 2019 as it remained below the January top of $16.20. In July, silver finally crawled to new high for this year as it traded up to $16.64. In August, silver eventually rose above its 2018 high of $17.70 when it traded to a high of $18.62. Last month, silver futures 
market finally took out the 2017 and 1865 and then traded at 1954 per ounce. Silver ran out of upside steam below the 2016 high at $21.09 and moved lower with gold over recent weeks. On October the 1st, gold hit a low of 1458.30, uh, 101.50 below its September high, but still $80.80 above the July 2016 high. Meanwhile, the price of, of nearby silver fell to low of $16.94 as it never conquered its 2016 peak. The gold market experienced a technical break to the upside on the long-term chart, but silver fell short of the mark in, Q, in the third quarter. So this, these, these numbers and the mentions of these uh, uh, resistance, I think, to $21.09, I think, is something to think about. That is really the resistance level. However, I do believe we are seeing new floors, but make no mistake, this is talking about how silver is kind of lagged behind. But this next section talks about how it is the more volatile precious metal that could work in the favor of closing that ratio between gold to silver that so many of us have been hoping to see for some time. Silver may be lagging gold, but it may be only a matter of time before the silver market takes the baton from gold if the yellow metal continues to move to the upside and makes new highs. Silver has a history of a far more volatile metal than gold because of the speculative nature of the market. Now, the speculative nature, it would one would uh, lend itself to um, using that as a way to invest in silver uh, because of the speculative, speculative nature, and that is true. But really, the only way to really do that effectively, I think, is in the futures or the um, electronic markets. Monthly historical volatility in the gold market stood at 13% at the end of the last week. The metric has moved higher from 5.58% in late 2018. Gold is a hybrid between a commodity and a currency. Well, money. So the yellow metal tends to display lower price variance than other commodity markets, including silver. Well, I've always said that, that silver is that hybrid between commodity and, and money. Now, I'm curious to see what they say about silver. Because uh, I believe that's what silver is. I believe to see gold as much more of a, a safe haven as money uh, than as a commodity. The level of monthly historical volatility in the silver market at the end of last week stood at 19.93%, which was up from just under 10% in late 2018. The difference in the price variance metrics tells us that silver moves in a wider range than gold over time and more on a percentage basis than the yellow metal. In the third quarter, gold moved 3.97% to the upside, while silver posted an over 11% gain, even though both, met, both metals were trading not far above their respective recent lows in the final days of September. And, uh, and here it talks about this open interest, about long and short positions. And I think, yeah, if you're going to work in this in the, in, the, in the electronic markets, and that's kind of where this article is, is heading, is in the electronic markets. You know, people do that, and that's the way you can trade the ratio. As I mentioned, there's a book about that that I've reviewed. And you can also um, speculate in the electronic uh, markets. That is a way to invest. But I think holding the precious, holding the precious metal, the physical version thereof, I think is the is the ultimate way to kind of hedge yourself. Silver. It is quite a metal, and um, it is volatile, and it will see its ups and downs. But I think us holding this metal. Um, we do it in the physical form, and I think that one way it, it constrains us uh, because it's not really so easy to just walk in and cash it out. I mean, yes, if you have an LCS nearby that buys your silver, that will do it. You'll take a hit on it for sure, a couple of percent, maybe between 3 and 5% on spot price. So in other words, you won't get full spot price. You'll get uh, that percentage under. Uh, but also... Uh, you know, if you don't have that, or if, even if you do, it, it, it's harder to take that hit. So you just uh, are better off just holding on to it in some ways. Unless, of course, the price skyrockets up uh, pretty dramatically. But if you have an appreciable amount of silver and they can they can buy it from you, 
that hit may not be so bad if you bought it at a much lower price. Uh, but the thing is, is living a life of, of, of speculating uh, buy and sell points, I think sort of defeats the purpose of what the precious metal is about. You know, silver is about a, uh, an insurance policy. And if, with any insurance policy, uh, they can be volatile too, uh, depending on your driving record or your health or what have you. Um, you know, if, if, if there's a time we don't need to use it and you're not seen as a, seen as a high risk for the insurance company, you'll get a lower premium. Uh, but the minute you become a high risk, well, your rates will go up um, or it'll become more expensive. And that is the nature of kind of the same thing with the with the silver markets, with silver as that metal. Holding the precious, holding the physical, I think is a way um, to kind of um, uh, subvert that risk. And, and make no mistake, if the price goes up, you know, people will be selling it and uh, the markets will react and... And you'll have to uh, compete with other sellers of the of the metal, which is another reason why it's probably a good idea to hold on to it. I know I remember 2011 very vividly, and uh, at my LCS seeing seeing a lot of silver passing through, um, and they bought it and resold it to refiners, and um, and even to this day we're seeing people uh, pull in and sell their precious metals. Um, at the local coin shop and pawn shops and other places around. But really, in the end, I believe silver to be one of those metals that you hold on to. You understand its volatility and understand that it's going to fluctuate. And really, that ratio between gold and silver is not going to come down until we see uh, an increased demand in the physical markets. Because people are selling when it gets high, when it gets higher, People were spooked over the last big, uh, I, I don't want to say crash, but the last big drip, drop and, and dip in the precious in the precious metal itself and silver. People felt burned. So any of anything they have, they decided, well, you know what? It's it's going, it's going. I'm not going to sell the rest of this until I see it go up again. And eventually, some people are getting out of silver because of it, because they got into it in around 2012 or what have you, thinking it was going to go up again. By the way, I was one of those as well. But I had been stacking long enough that I that I knew to hold on to it and not sell it. I didn't sell a single ounce during that time. And in, in retrospect, I probably should have. But, you know, you live and learn. And I was in it for the long term. So the lesson, the moral of the story is, is understanding that silver will be volatile. And to buy it, to hold it, and sell it when you need to or when you retire or maybe even pass it on to the next generation. So post your thoughts below about silver's volatility. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.